Hey guys, I'm Megan. Welcome to my sweet digs. Before we get started, subscribe below. All right, come on. Every day I come in, I like put my jacket away in the closet and I sit down in what I call my Mr. Rogers chair and I sort of take off my shoes. It's just sort of what I do. I live in Carroll Gardens, Brooklyn in a traditional one bedroom apartment, railroad style. I pay $2,000 a month, which is a lot, and it's about 600 square feet. Here you have my kitchen. The sunlight in the kitchen is probably one of my favorite things about this apartment. I grew up in Florida and I don't really like miss the beach or anything, but I really do miss just being around plants. I like to joke that being a plant lady is the new cat lady. So I actually do a lot of cooking. Um, I also like to keep some stuff that I can make some easy meals. I am not like one of those New Yorkers that just order seamless all the time. This is my little nook that I eat at. I have people over, we sit here. Above it is where I keep like all my little tchotchkes and things I've gathered from travels. The person that owned the building originally owned a tin ceiling company. So each room in the building has a different tin ceiling pattern, which is really cool. So now I'll show you guys my bathroom. Small but mighty. My least favorite part about the apartment is probably my shower. It's just really small and tight. It's like kind of like the tube you would roll up to at a teller's window. I picked this sort of dark teal color. It's somewhere in between hunter green and navy blue because I like the way it looked with black and white tile. Welcome to Sacred Digs. All about witchcraft in the modern world. I'm just kidding. <laughs> so I like to burn different scents. Palo Santo is one of my favorite smells. Growing up, I lived in eight different houses all in the same city. My parents um, on the side, they build and sort of design houses. It's definitely affected my home sensibility in the way that home is really important. It's a part of me. It is something that reflects me. It's something that evolves over time. This is my living space. This is one of my favorite faces. It's from the Memphis Group Collective, Sud Sauce. I just like it, I don't know why. This is my couch. It was $650. I got it second hand. I sort of bought it with the intent to reupholster it. If you think this couch deserves to be recovered in a different fabric, let me know in the comments below. This is my art nook where I keep all my art supplies, books, I do my painting. I started painting patterns as a way to relax and zone out, listen to music. It has since just become something I do on the side. So I paint everything from wrapping paper to textile designs for clothing. Art's a huge part of my life. It's sort of influenced my home style in the way that like just having sort of a space to be able to do it and to constantly create, but also to sort of like honor this, that it will always be in motion and changing and nothing will ever be perfect. So sort of embracing like a wabi-sabi mentality of liking imperfections and sort of embracing them. Lastly, I'll walk you into my bedroom. I was going for, I think, just like a very chill and serene vibe. I really try not to bring electronics into the bed, specifically my laptop. If I have to work late or from home, I'll work from the kitchen. I'm super neat. I've been that way my whole life. It frees up brain space, basically, for me to be more productive and more creative, and it's just the way I like to live. Walk you through my closet. Robes, more robes more hair ribbons. I think you can never have too many of those. I like to keep my closet sort of meticulously organized. Sweaters, pants, I like to fold like a store. I love Curl Gardens because it has a great sense of community. It's the kind of place that you can go in and get to know the people that work at the coffee shops. Actually, the day I moved in, I was getting groceries downstairs at the sandwich shop that I live above, and I got to know the owner, and a couple months later, we started dating. And he's my boyfriend, so that's probably my favorite part about this apartment was meeting someone really special and just feels like a special little New York story as well. I think it's hard to describe like my home style. I think of it in like different regions. So like maybe my kitchen's like your English 
grandmother and my bedroom's sort of like your hippie sister that lives in LA and then my living room is sort of like your yeah, really eccentric New York aunt. Living alone in New York was definitely a goal for me. I don't have like a lot of roommate horror stories from my New York experience, thankfully, but I think there's just like an element of living alone that is more serene and calm. I started looking for one bedroom apartments about two years before I moved, just to sort of get a sense of market pricing. And then I adjusted my lifestyle then, so I knew I would be able to do it. I also wanted to have this like, pocket of adulthood that was like really special, and it was just me. It's been wonderful. I think living alone builds character. It's given me like a really big sense of pride. And so yeah, I love living alone. That's a wrap guys. Thanks for coming to My Sweet Digs. To watch more videos, click here. And to subscribe, click here.